I've been on the orchard all my life. I was um, born and raised here. Um, my dad purchased the orchard in 1965, I believe, with a partner. I came along in 1969, so I've uh, been in the apple business all my life. The tradition of, of cider making and, and, of course, making hard cider uh, is very important to me. The knowledge that I use in cider making is stuff that I learned as I grew up. It was kind of hands-on things, um, learned from other people, learned from my father. Most all the fruits raised right here on the, on the farm, um, so we, we can care for it in the manner that we want from springtime all the way through harvest. Harvest is really critical, I think, for, uh, for hard cider. The fruit needs to be picked at an optimal point. So we have control of all that here on the farm. The fruit is harvested by hand. From the field, it usually goes to the cold storage. It goes to the packing shed and it's graded, um, sized and sorted. The call apples and the, and the smaller fruit goes usually back in the cold storage and goes to the cider mill to make either sweet or hard cider. The pressing process um, usually starts early in the morning as we put the mill together. The apples are, are washed and ground. From there, they're pumped through a Santa feed system into the press room. The press itself that we use is an old rack and cloth press that's, uh, we think, probably about 100 years old. There are other types of pressing systems, um, but they're not as efficient as extracting the, the amount of juice that we can from, from a bushel of apples. For making hard cider, the process is much the same, only we choose the, um, the varieties of apples beforehand. We blend a lot at the beginning. Uh, we're, we're looking for acidity and, of course, sugar. So we're able, through pressing for sweet cider, I pretty much know my apples that we have, and so I can choose those apples specifically. And then as we start putting our blend together, we're able to test that, those batches. And if we need more sugar, if we need more acidity, then we'll pull out apples that, that have those characteristics and blend them in. From there, we do some testing as we're blending through the day. Um, before it goes into the fermentation tanks, we usually can balance out what we need in, in the juice through adding different varieties. And hopefully at the end of the day, we have a, a perfect balance of, of what we need just from the apples. The other thing that we do is different fermentation processes, and that includes um, using different yeast or the lack of yeast. Um, and that makes our products different. Yesteryear, um, we kind of made that as to be a traditional American style cider, maybe that something our colonial uh, forefathers might have had. With Cider Maker's Barrel, we use kind of traditional uh, Virginia uh, wine sap, so they're, they're very traditional apples grown here locally um, that go into that cider. Some of the cideries are starting to age um, their products in the bourbon barrels, but we actually do the fermentation process in the barrel. Um, for me, that was just my interpretation of the local farmhouse style that I was used to. Um, farmhouse meaning that usually it was the local farmers that used to actually bring their app own apples sometimes um, to the cider mill and have them pressed or, or buy juice from us. Uh, and they would put them in a, in a barrel and take them back to their farms. And that's how I learned how to, to make that product. That's the way we did it. As we started Old Hill, we had um, kind of a, a vision for it to be part of the, the family farm. And um, that's been a, a, a big part of what we've done so far and, and what we probably will do in the future is to keep it um, at a level that we can maintain here on the farm uh, and fit into our kind of our family model. Um, we're not looking to uh, mass produce anything. We want it to be um, a product that, that people can enjoy and get it out to people, certainly but we also want it to be um, something that's special.